will go ahead and begin. Um, what I'm going to present uh, today um, are some preliminary uh, findings from a new report uh, that, that my institute has been working on. And we really had intended uh, this to be published uh, in, in advance of the, uh, the, the upcoming 25th anniversary of, of Chernobyl. And, uh, of course, you know, th there was a, a sense that that would be an occasion where uh, the public, uh, media, government sort of reassessed where we are with nuclear power. And our intent with, with doing this report was really to give a, 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 a clear um, and, and, and sort of incisive analysis of just where nuclear power stands in, in, in the world. And that's in part because so many of the discussions about nuclear power uh, tend to very quickly devolve into, you know, are you for it or are you against it? As, as if there is, is sort of, you know, one you know, sort of single you know, piece of legislation or one single technology that is either going to be um, up or down. Um, in reality, of course, um, this is a much more complex uh, question. This shows in green uh, reactor startups and then in orange uh, the shutdowns of operating plants uh, going back to the re really the dawn of the commercial nuclear age uh, in the late uh, 1950s. And you can see the sort of rapid surge in orders, um, the peaking in the 1980s, uh, the very substantial decline, um, and then the, the sort of trickle of new orders that we've seen in, in recent years. Uh, for, for nuclear plants, um, and, then, and then the growing number of, of shutdowns. Um, just to give you a little bit of historical analysis of what's going on here, uh, there are two you know, really key historic events in the history of nuclear power um, that really have, have shaped trends. One, of course, was in 1979, uh, the Three Mile Island um, accident, which led to a great slowdown in nuclear construction in the U.S. Now, there was such momentum that that sort of continued for some time, um, but, it, but new construction starts almost immediately stopped in the United States, which of course is where that accident occurred, and then, and then it slowed down in other parts of the world. Uh, and then you can see um, that the 1986 accident in Chernobyl you know, marked another a big a turning point. That combined uh, with uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union, the political changes in Eastern Europe, um, led to uh, cancellation of a lot of planned nuclear plants and in fact a lot of the shutdowns that you see in Orange uh, beginning in 1990 uh, flowed from those economic and, and political uh, changes. And then this is the result in terms of total operating uh, nuclear capacity. When you add up uh, the, 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 the actual addition of new reactors as well as the shutdowns. And you can see that there has really been little change in overall nuclear generating capacity uh, one way or the other uh, really for most of the last 20 years. A few, a few uh, bumps uh, up, up and down, um, but it is, it is no longer a rapidly growing uh, part of the world's electricity uh, generating capacity. Um, you know, one of the things that I think, and, and let me just go on to the, the, the next slide here in explaining this, you know, there, there is, it's frequently said in the, in the U.S. news media and in, in, in quite a few of the news reports um, since uh, the, the accident in Japan that the, the United States is, is an exception. It, it's obviously well known that we have not started work on any new reactors at this point uh, uh, since the late 1970s in the U.S. So it's been, you know, well over uh, 30 years. But it's frequently said that, well, there's a sort of a construction boom underway in, in other parts of the world. You know, I think many people have the, the, the misimpression that the United States is, is a total exception. Well, here you see the trends in the European uh, Union. Again, um, construction starts and, uh, and shutdowns. And you can see that the trend in Europe is very similar uh, to the global trend. In fact, it's a bit more dramatic. And then if you look at total generating uh, capacity um, you can, and, and number of plants, uh, you can see that there's actually been a, a significant decline in number of plants and a, a flattening off in, in, in generating uh, capacity. 
uh, even France, which of course is, is often touted even, even by those in Washington and generally uh, don't put uh, uh, France out there as a sort of a model of political or economic development, um, do frequently say that, that France is sort of the model and that it's, it's moved forward. France does in fact have a, a very heavy dependence on nuclear power representing um, something like 75 or even 80 percent of, of power generation, but it, it too has not been building additional nuclear plants in, in recent years or even in the last uh, uh, decade or so. This shows you a breakdown in terms of the startups. Now this, this sort of gets us into this sort of notion of, of, of a nuclear renaissance. And clearly there has been a, a heightened push on the part of, of the nuclear industry both in, in the United States um, and in other parts of the world uh, to revive the industry uh, in, in, in light of, of uh, concern about global warming and the general push uh, for low carbon um, energy. Um, in most parts of the world, though, while there have been some successes politically in terms of, of, of getting additional government subsidies, um, certainly here in Washington getting additional governmental support from certain members of Congress and so on, um, it has been really quite modest in terms of what it's led to in terms of, 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 of actual reactor um, 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 startups and, and con the construction process. Here you can see that, that there have been just 32 reactor um, startups um, since uh, 2001 uh, from there to, to the, the present. Um, and I think the interesting thing about this is the way in which the figures are really uh, dominated uh, by, by the Asian countries. And then within that, though you can't see it in this particular graph, uh, China has really played a very dominant role. There has, in fact, been very little in terms of, of, of either new reactor orders or in terms of startups in most other parts of the world, really just a, a, a trickle uh, that, that we see uh, going on over the last uh, several years. Of course, one of the results of, of these trends is that we have an, an aging uh, nuclear uh, a fleet. Um, so this is the, the, the number of reactors in each level of, of how many years old they are. So at the right-hand side, we have two plants that are, that are uh, uh, 43 years old, four that are 42 years old. You can see we have, on the, on the left-hand side of the graph, relatively few uh, young, young plants. Uh, um, so there are there there is is a, I think a very peculiar sort of nature to the the structure of, of the, the the power generating uh, capacity and of course this is in a sense sort of brought out by the fact that this this terrible accident in Japan um, occurred at what might seem like a very old plant 40 years old I mean that's the time that most of the original um, operating licenses last. Uh, in fact, as you can see, that's not that di different from the, 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 the median age of nuclear power plants uh, in, in, in the world. This, is, this shows the trend of what would happen to generating capacity over time if, if plants shut down at the end of their, their operating life and that, that those that are currently planned are completed but no additional plants are ordered. Now obviously that's you know, not necessarily a realistic set of assumptions, but I think it shows that we would have to have a very great acceleration almost immediately in terms of, of, of new nuclear plants um, just to be able to, to keep a level. Um, the, the trend is going to be, again, because of those aging uh, reactors that we're going to see, you know, a very significant decline in the, in the, in the relatively near future uh, unless we can complete, unless the world completely turns around the construction trend, um, something that, that, that obviously is going to be much more uh, difficult uh, now. One of the interesting things, and again, this sort of relates to the, the, the age of the nuclear plants, we believe, is that the actual generation of, of nuclear power, as opposed to the generating capacity, has actually declined over the last five years. You can see that the average growth rate for nuclear power is minus a half a percent per year. Now, that, the capacity, as I, as I indicated earlier, has remained about steady, uh, but the, the ability to keep these plants going, um, uh, you know, a substantial part of, of, of the year um, has significantly uh, declined um, in, in, in many cases. Now, interestingly, I think what we're almost certainly going to see 
Um, you can already see it, certainly in Japan, but also um, in Germany and, 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 and probably soon in other countries, that one of the reactions uh, to this, uh, to this um, accident is likely to be a, a, a significant decline in nuclear power uh, generation uh, in, in, in the years immediately ahead. We've already lost 4,000 megawatts just at Fukushima <coughs> alone, not to mention um, the other um, shutdowns, I think many of which are likely to be long-term in Japan and again possibly in, in other parts of the world. Um, the contrast here you can see with the renewable energy sources in terms of their very rapid uh, growth rate. I think it's very interesting, though, uh, to note that even with, even if you measure in absolute terms as opposed to the percentage terms uh, that, that are displayed here, just to give you a couple of numbers, um, there was about four gigawatts, 4,000 megawatts of nuclear capacity connected to the world's grid last year. Now that's actually just about equal to the 4,000 megawatts that was destroyed uh, in, effectively at, 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 at Fukushima. But that 4,000 megawatts contrasts with about 36,000 megawatts of wind power that was added last year and about 16,000 megawatts of solar that was added last year. So you can see that in contrast to what I think is sort of popularly argued in, in many, many quarters, which is that we must have nuclear power because it's the only large-scale option that can give us low carbon or zero carbon energy in the near future. The people, even people who you know, say, well, I, you know, I recognize that renewables are something that's important for the long run, that, that nuclear is the only thing that is sort of immediately available now. Well, it's true that, that, that nuclear provides you know, roughly 13, 14 percent of the world's electricity. It, it is a significant part of the current energy system. But it, it, neither, it neither is providing significant additional low carbon energy in terms of the annual increments today. Um, second, those figures, are, in, at least in the short term, are almost certainly uh, going to uh, decline. Um, but third, even under a very optimistic pre-Fukushima scenario, um, it's very, very hard to envision how you would get um, even a fraction of the new additional energy supply that, we're, we're, that we're, we're almost certain to be getting from renewables just based on the business as usual path that we're on. Um, just a one, one final thought that I hope we can get into in, in questions. Um, as, as I've been analyzing these numbers over the last couple of days, one thing that really jumps out is just the way um, China is, has become almost the only game in town in terms of new nuclear reactor orders in recent years. And uh, probably was the one hope out there of sort of a sustained uh, expansion of nuclear power anywhere in the world. Now even in China, while it's big on a relatively big compared to the, the lack of activity elsewhere, it's a small part of what China is doing in terms of its investment in, in, in renewable energy and, and other options. But I think that, it, that it's going to be very, very interesting and maybe even decisive to see what does China now decide to do in the aftermath of Fukushima. China was one of the first countries uh, to react in terms of saying that it was going to reevaluate its nuclear plans. It's been extremely worried, in part obviously because Japan is very uh, close by. But I think um, you know, when, when, we, when we write the final history of, of does Fukushima actually become the, the, the sort of final chapter of the global nuclear industry, what happens in China will probably be the thing that determines how that story comes out. Thank you very much, and uh, let me now turn it over to Linda. Or to Ralph.